Yeah, it's just about four o'clock. This isn't really a marker. Um, I just thought I'd get the view. Um, there is a very bare mountain. That's towards the north, up the valley. And that's towards Ataniqua Pass in the west. And down here at the bottom you can see the new greenery coming out already. New ferns. First bit of green growth again after the fires. Yep, there's some um, lens flare. Oh, no. What can I do about that? There we go, I'll throw some shade. And turn around further to the southwest onto the railway line. As long as you follow the railway line, you shouldn't be in trouble. There's not much opportunity to get lost. And now it's back around again. It's about quarter past four. We're coming up on our first tunnel. I'm going to keep the shot running um, so you can get an idea of what it looks like. of the town just about visible. This is going northwards and turning around to the east. There's a valley among the trees and some running water down in the stream. I'm not sure whether this is the waterfall we're actually looking for. I doubt it though. It is very nice and green down here. Birds seem to like it. Turning around further the way we've come. Now it's pointing down the valley towards the southwest. Some more lens flare, let's just cast some shadow, turn around. And on into the tunnel. Apparently, there are seven tunnels along this railway line. Perhaps one day I'll do a tour of all seven of them. And then go. And there's a nice brown mountain stream. Apparently the water is, is that brown color because of all the tannins that uh, get absorbed as the water seep through the ground. It is perfectly drinkable, um, as they say, potable water. This is made by a man, no? Yeah, this furrow. It's not made by nature, it's made by man. Yeah, this furrow is man-made. It's not a natural ravine. I suppose it's deliberately made to divert the water so it doesn't dam up and flood the railway line. Okay, let's see how this goes as we go into the tunnel. Turning around. When you go up Cattle Peak, you stand yeah. there and you look yeah. down here. At right? the east, yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Seems to be a long dark tunnel. We're getting our flashlights out. Oh yes, I can see the light on the other side. It's just a short tunnel. Might not even need flashlights. There's a little alcove along the way. So if the train comes along, you can duck in there. Get out of harm's way. And there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So dark, I don't think it actually catches on the on the camera. Except if you point it at the opposite end. There's a little stream of water along the left hand side it seems. I don't know what this video is going to look like when I edit it, but I can see perfectly even without a flashlight. reflection of the roof. There's another alcove coming up on the left hand side, the right hand side. From what I understand, these alcoves um, alternate left hand side, right hand side, left hand side, right hand side. So if you ever find yourself in a railway tunnel like this and you hear an oncoming train, or before you hear the oncoming train, keep track of where the alcove, the last alcove was. Here's another one on the left hand side. There it is. Yeah, it's just about big enough for, I don't know, about five people to stand side by side. Well, not side by side, but right up against each other, like sardines. And here's another one on the right hand side. There are other longer and darker tunnels along the way for which you definitely need a flashlight. I hope to show them to you someday. Okay. It's about 10 to 5 and we've reached a very nice viewpoint towards the west. Uh, there is a fairly steep drop so I need to watch my footing here. On the ridge, uh, it's difficult to see with all the ambient light, but... Uh, and you can't blow up to the stone there, eh? with the Oxwagon trail, you, you can see the stone marking. Yeah, on the ridge, in the middle of the screen at the moment, there's some fence flare. Um, 
on that ridge is the Craddock Pass Ox Wagon Trail and there should be some white stone piles along that way. I can't see it on the screen at the moment, perhaps when I edit the video. But if I look past the camera, I can see the stone piles. Turning around, throw over line the way we've come. Coming back up again. I can see one, two, three, four, five. Five white stone piles along the way. And there's the railway line. We're probably going to go around that bend and follow the Craddock Pass down back home again. It's about five to five and we have finally tracked down our quarry. There is the Chief Cliff waterfall from the distance. I can hear the water running from where I'm standing. Not quite sure if you can see the water running on the video itself. Um, trying to find the railway line. There it is in the middle of the shot at the moment and following that line horizontally through the bushes a little bit higher horizontally on the other side going around. the west, Otaniko Pass, down the valley. It's the railway line along which we've come. Okay, so apparently there's another tunnel. I'm panning around to see where it is. Oh, there where I thought where the railway line was. Yeah, that is the tunnel. That is there's a tunnel. No, there it comes out on that side. Okay. That green spot right on the left hand edge of the video at the moment. That apparently is the tunnel's exit. So we've got another tunnel on the way. Alright, here we go. It's just about five o'clock now and we've come across our first little stream in the vicinity of the Tearcliff waterfall. Coming down from the right hand side out of the mountains. We suspect that this might not be the main waterfall that we're looking for. And that's the way we've come. There's looking down the valley. Take a look over the edge. There's some water splashing. Nothing major. We suspect there might be a bigger waterfall just a little bit further on. Panning around further. Carrying on. It's about 25 past 5. And this is a couple of paces down the track into the next valley. Um, um, but we should start heading home. We've got about two hours of daylight left before sunset. I'm not quite sure whether this is natural or man-made. The wall is definitely man-made. I'm not too sure about the gully. That's the way back, the way we've come. Coming across, across the tracks, 
Nothing hugely spectacular over here. Not much here either. It's about 10 to 6 now. It's a bit of cloud rising. The fog rolling in. And we're going along the railway track still. Through the tunnel coming up. And then down the Crudder Passway, hopefully getting home before sundown. There's our next tunnel. This one is long and very, very dark. Ooh. Flashlight time. There's our first alcove on the right hand side. I can still see the tracks but I don't think the lighting is good enough for the video. It is perfectly black on my screen at the moment. Okay, it's just before six o'clock. We're heading home now, going through the tunnel. There are the tracks ahead of me and then the light just becomes too dim for the camera to see I think okay there's a little light ahead that's one of my companions flashlight I can now see the light coming in at the end of the tunnel, but I don't think the camera is sensitive enough to pick it up. Here's another L curve on the left-hand side of the track. There's the end of the tunnel. Are my companions with their flashlights up ahead on the tracks. Oh, here's a nice big alcove. There's the top archway.
Okay, and there we are outside again. I can almost not believe that was four and a half minutes. It really didn't feel that long. Perhaps it's with all the stopping and looking at alcoves and shining lights and all of that. Here is a view down into the valley. You can hear some water running down there. There's the railway line on the opposite side. And now we should really be heading back. Enough fun and games for a while. Yeah, it's just about six, uh, five past six. Clouds rolling in. And we've just come across a very nice view of the valley going down. Not quite sure if you can see it on the video, but it is a gorgeous view.